This is half past paper week six for foundation, all of the even numbers. This is our sixth paper, so the end of this 2018 June series. We'll be moving on next week to a non-calculator paper. Um, back to that. I haven't decided what week yet, but soon will be revealed. Okay, question number two, write 0.3 as a percentage. So percentage is out of 100. 0.3 is three tenths. It's three divided by 10. So if I want to make that out of 100, it would need to be 30 out of 100. And so 30 out of 100 is 30%. If you were thinking three, don't confuse it with 0 0.03. That's 3% because that is 3 out of 100. So there we go. This answer here, just 30%. Here are the first four terms of a sequence. 2, then 9, then 16, then 23. And we're going up in sevens here. Going up in sevens. Write down the next term of the sequence. So 7 bigger would be 30. Explain how you got your answer. Added 7 to the previous term and add 7 is absolutely sufficient for that mark. You can just say add 7, that's fine. Work out the 10th term in the sequence. So 2, then 9, then 16, then 23, then 30. If I add another 7, that's 37. If I add another 7, 44. Another 7 is 51, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I need this one here, the 10th term. Another seven is 58 and another seven is 65. So 65 is your 10th term. If you did use the nth term, so if you were asked for the nth term, this is the seven times table. So we would say seven n, but this is actually five smaller than the seven times table because the seventh, uh, seven times table starts on a seven. Our sequence starts on a two. So it's the seven times table, seven n, minus 5. So if I wanted the 10th number in the sequence, I would make n 10. 7 times 10 is 70. Take away 5 is 65. So that's another way of doing it. But don't worry if you're happy just counting on. That's absolutely fine as well. Question number 6. Write down all the factors of 60. So with this, we want to make sure we don't miss any. So I always like to start on 1. 1 and 30. 1 times 30 is 30. Then I'm going to think about 2. Does 2 go into 30? Yes, it does. 15 times. Does 3 go into 30? Yep, 10 times. Does 4 go into 30? Now, 30 is not in the 4 times table. So there's 4 times 7.5, but we only think about whole numbers when we do factors. Does 5 go in? Yes, it does 6 times. So therefore, my factors of 30 are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15 and 30. I stopped where I stopped because there's no point in me doing 6 because I've already got it on this side. So as soon as you get up to the middle or like the numbers that you've already got, then you're all good. Question number 8. Find the value of this. So it's formatted slightly funny on mine, but we're finding the value of this. Should just be a multiplication symbol. I'll correct it for the paper. So we're typing the square root button first. Everything here is inside the square root. So square root first, 1.44 times 3.61 and that is 57 over 25. I'm going to press that SD button and that is 2.28 as our answer. For the next one, you just need to type it exactly as it is in your calculator. This is testing your ability to use a calculator. So open the bracket first. 3.54 minus 0 0.96. Shut the bracket and then press squared and then minus 4.096. So we're typing it in exactly as they've typed it there. And that is 2.5604. Very good. If you wanted to safeguard some marks and just double check that you do get some marks here, you could always do um, some of it. So for example, if I just work out that bracket, that bracket is 2.58 squared. So I could show some working there just to make sure I've definitely got the one. But if you're fully correct, you don't need to show any working there. That would get you two marks for the fully correct answer. Question number 10. Bronwyn works in a restaurant. The table gives her rates of pay. Uh, we've got Monday to Friday, she gets paid £8.40 per hour. And at the weekend, she gets £11.20 per hour. Bronwyn worked for a total of 20 hours last week. She worked eight of those hours at the weekend. Show that Bronwyn was paid less than £200. So if she's worked eight hours at the weekend... Then we know she's worked 12 in the week. 20 take away 8 gives us 12 hours worked in the week. So we need 12 of these 
and eight of these. So I'm going to do £8.40 times by 12 hours and £11.20, they're her weekend um, hours, times by eight. Again, we're just using a calculator for this. We have got a calculator for this paper. So £8.40 times 12, that is £100 and 80 pence. And at the weekend, £11.20 times by the eight hours that she worked is £89.60. Adding those values together to get her total pay is going to be £190 and 40 pence. So yes, she is paid less than 200. Always nice to just write a little statement to confirm. Three marks for that one, it's quite nice. Okay, question number 12. Now I'm not gonna be able to measure this on the screen, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Um, I've measured it with a ruler, I've printed it out on paper, and I've measured it with a ruler, and because it's a scale drawing, it's two scale, and we know that the scale is one to 200. So I need to measure this. And what they're saying is that real life is 200 times bigger. Now, you might get a slightly different answer to me when you do this, depends on your printer settings when you print out the paper. So I get that this is 5.8 centimeters, and I get that this side here is 11.5 centimeters. So real life is gonna be 200 times bigger. If the ratio is one to 200, that is saying to get from our scale drawing to real life, it's 200 times bigger. I'm gonna work out the perimeter of this shape. Now you could times each side by 200, but I'm gonna work out the perimeter of the scale drawing and then I'm gonna worry about timesing it by 200. So the perimeter of this would be all of the sides added together. We want the distance all the way around the outside. So 11.5, add 5.8, add 11.5, add 5.8. Adding that all together is gonna to give you the distance around the outside of the shape, and I get 34.6 for that. Centimeters. So if the distance around the outside of this shape is 34.6, if I times that by 200, I will get the distance around the actual real life tennis court. And that is 6,920. But remember that that was in centimeters, so this is in centimeters as well. 6,920 centimeters. They've asked me to give my answer in meters. 100 centimeters is one meter. So to get from centimeters to meters, you're gonna be dividing by 100. Let's take this answer divide it by 100, and that's gonna be 69.2 meters. So that's the real life distance around the edge of the tennis court. Makes sense. If I was saying it was 6,920 uh, meters, we're saying it's almost 7K just to get around the edge of a, a tennis court, which doesn't really make that much sense. So I'm happy that that answer feels sensible. 69.2 meters would be my answer to that. Question number 14. Here are the marks 20 students got in a French test. Show this information in a stem and leaf diagram. So when we're doing a stem and leaf diagram, it'd be great to do a draft um, first. Just take my advice on that. Um, I've marked thousands of these. And when students try and just spot the numbers in order, it tends to go wrong. It's very, very hard to look at 20 numbers and put them in order without doing a draft first. So on the left, we're going to put the tens. So we've got numbers in the 60s, numbers in the, seven, numbers in the 70s, numbers in the 80s, and numbers in the 90s. So we need six, seven, eight, nine on the left. And then we're just going to go through as they are now. So 76 would be a six in the 70s row. 82 is going to go here. 84 also goes in the eight row. Now you can put commas or not. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter. 69 is here. 80 is a zero in this row. 64 is there. 70 is there. 81 is there. 75 is there. 91. 87. 67. 80 is there. 70 is there. And I know this isn't in order and it's going to need to be in order. So we're going to need to do that after. But it's much easier to order um, a few numbers than it is to order them all at once by looking at the list of 20 numbers. 71 and 77. There we go. So that's now my draft and that is not in order. So now I'm going to do my final version and I'm going to put it in order. So looking at the six row, I need to have the four, then the seven, then the nine, then the nine. So four, then seven, then nine, and then nine. Then with the next row, 
with the 70s, I need 0, then 0, then 1, then 5, then 6, then 6, then 7. With the 80s, I need 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4 and 7. And with the 90s, that's actually in the right order, so just 1 and 4. The last thing I want you to do is just check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I started with 20, I've got 20 in the end, so I'm happy that I've most likely got them all and most likely got it correct. So you will lose one mark if you miss one, you will lose two marks if you miss two or if you've got two errors there at all. Okay, so the third mark of this is going to be for your key and it doesn't matter what number you use, I'm going to use 64 just because it's the first one in there. So key means 6 line 4 equals 64. So you're just explaining to someone how to read this. This is 64, 67, 69, 69 and so on. Okay, So you're explaining how you read it. If it was um, 8.4, 6.9, 8.0 and so on, then you could just do normal numbers in the uh, stem and leaf and you could use the key to put that point in for example but here we just had integers so I'm happy that the key looks like that okay oh part b one of these students is going to be chosen at random the pass mark in the French test is 71 Omar says the probability of a student failed the French test is a quarter so if the pass mark is 71 I'm saying that these people did not pass 71, so we know that 71, 75, 76, they're all good, and people in the 80s are all good, and people in the 90s are all good. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six people out of 20 that failed. Okay, a quarter would be equivalent to five out of 20. If it's out of 20, we've times the bottom by five, I also need to times the top by five. So six out of 20 failed, but one quarter is 5 out of 20, Omar is incorrect. There we go. It's actually 6 out of 20. Question number 16. Alan, Bisper and Chan share a sum of money. Alan gets an eighth of the money. Bisper gets half of the money. Chan gets the rest of the money. Alan gets £2.50. Work out how much Bisper gets. Now, if £2.50 is an eighth, I find it easiest to draw this. So let's say this is half. And then if we half that again, we get a quarter. And if we half that again, we get eighths. So what we're saying is that Alan is getting an eighth, which is £2.50. And then Bisper gets half the money. So let's put him this end. Bisper's going to get four out of eight. Uh, that was Alan, wasn't it? And then uh, Chan gets the rest. So Chan's getting these three. So I work out how much money Bisper gets. Well, if Alan gets one part, one out of eight, and that is £2.50, then you could times that by eight, and that would give you all of the money. Or you can just times it by four, and that's going to get you Bispers. I'm going to times by eight, just to make this really super clear. If one-eighth of the money is £2.50, £2.50 times by 8 is £20. So that means all together there is £20. And if Bisper gets half of the money, then Bisper is getting £10. But you could also just say, well, he's getting four sections and that's four lots of £2.50. So either way, £10 is the correct answer for that top bit. Then it says, find the ratio of the amount of money Alan gets to the amount of money Chan gets. Give your answer in the form A to B, where A and B are whole numbers. So the easiest way to do this is, is to look at what I've just drawn. Alan's getting one part and Chan's getting three parts. So that's the answer. Alan's getting one part and Chan's getting three parts. One to three. Okay. So because Alan had one eighth and um, Bisper got four eighths, the amount that was left, so that's A, that's B, and then Chan, he was getting the rest, and what was left was three eighths. So if you got the ratio as one eighth to three eighths, as a lot of students do, it's absolutely okay just to make that one to three. If the denominators are the same, you can just times both sides by eight and therefore get rid of those denominators and just be left with one to three. Alan had to go on the left and Chan had to go on the right, 
Alan is first, Chan is second. So that had to be that way round for full marks as well. Question number 18, work out the value of this and give your answer in standard form. So again, I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to press that fraction button first. So on your Casio calculator, you should have this button somewhere. Press that first and in the numerator, I'm going to type 2.645 times 10 to the power of 9. And then I'm going to use the down arrow to get to the bottom of the fraction and type 1.15 times 10 to the power of 3. And that is 2300000. But we want this answer in standard form. Standard form is a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to the power of something. So the digits I want here are 2 and 3. So I'm going to put 2.3 as my number between 1 and 10 times 10 to the power of something. So we need to work out how many times would you need to times 2.3 by 10 to get this number above, which is 2,300,000. So I would like the decimal point to be here, but at the minute it's here. Now I understand that it's the numbers that are moving, not the decimal point, but it's far easier to bounce the decimal point than it is to bounce all of those numbers. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six and a million is normally six so 2.3 times 10 to the power of six there we go question number 20 expand and simplify 5p add 3 minus 2 lots of 1 minus 2p so when we expand brackets we need to do what's on the outside multiplied by each of the things inside it so we're doing five lots of this first bracket take away two lots of the second bracket. So we're going to do minus two lots of this and minus two lots of this. So all together, five times P is 5P, five times three is 15. And then I'm doing minus two lots of one, which is just minus two. And here's where most students go wrong. You are doing minus two lots of minus two P. And if I'm doing a negative times a negative, that is going to be plus 4p. So our answer here is 9p. I've got positive 5p, add 4 more p. And then I've got 15. I'm taking away 2, and that is positive 13. So that's my final answer. It doesn't matter if you wrote, uh, if you wrote it the other way around, 13 add 9p. But I'm just going to put 9p add 13. You cannot pop that together and make it 22 because they're not like terms. The 9 is with a P and 13 is the constant term on its own. Fantastic. Question number four. When a bias six-sided dice is thrown once, the probability that it will land on a four is 0 0.65. The bias dice is thrown twice. Amir draws this probability tree diagram. The diagram is not correct. Uh, write down two things wrong with it. So firstly, with tree diagrams, our branches here need to add to make one, and that's because we're certain to either land on a four or not land on a four. And if that's certain, the probability must add up to one. So first thing I'm gonna say is that 0 0.65 add 0 0.25 does not equal one on first branches. Great, and to make it really clear, we could even do this. Okay, so the second thing that's wrong, if you actually look at the second branches, it was the probability of it landing on a four is 0 0.65. And actually they've got that the wrong way around here. So landing on a four, this one should be 0 0.65, same as it is down here. So the top branch is here. And again, I remember marking this question and lots of people were very vague about which set of branches they're talking about. And that's why I'm kind of making this super clear here. So um, I'm gonna say that the probabilities are on the wrong branches or the wrong way round for the second throw. I'm just gonna be really clear and say land on four should be 0 0.65. If you just said they're the wrong way round on the second throw, it's not clear that you're talking about um, these ones at the bottom or these ones at the top. So just be really clear with that. Question number six. There are some counters in a bag. The counters are red, white, blue, or yellow. Bob is going to take at random a counter from the bag. The table shows each of the probabilities that the counter will be blue or will be yellow. There are 18 blue counters in the bag, so we know that this 
represents 18 counters. The probability that the counter Bob takes will be red is twice the probability that it will be white. So I know that this probability needs to be double this one. So I'm actually going to write 2x and x. I don't know what the probability is, but I know that red needs to be double white. So if white has a probability of x, then red has a probability of 2x. Work out the number of red counters in the bag. So, so far here, if we add together the probabilities that we've got so far, 0 0.45 add 0 0.25, that is 0 0.7. And so we're left with 0 0.3. We know that probability has to add up to make 1. So 1 take away 0 0.7 is 0 0.3. Now you might prefer to think of this as a ratio. The ratio is 2 to 1. But either way, either 2x add x, so 3x equals 0 0.3, or you can think of it in the ratio 2 to 1, in which case we're dividing by 3, we're taking this 0 0.3, dividing it by 3, so 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and x equals 0 0.1. So therefore, white is 0 0.1 and red is 0 0.2. Great. We need to work out the number of red counts in the bag. Now, at the minute, I know that 0 0.45, which is 45%, equals 18 counters. So I know that that is worth 18. So if I got 5%, for example, that would be dividing by 9. And I'm getting 5% because it's going to be a really helpful amount. I can make it make 10%, I can make it make 20%, I can find out these missing values here. So dividing by 9 is 2 counters. So every 5% is worth two counters, which means 10% or 0 0.1 is worth four counters because that would be double. Now we want to know how many red counters there are. Red counters is 0 0.2, which is 20%. So if 10% is four counters, 20% is going to be double that and that's going to be eight counters. So eight is the answer they're looking for there. Four marks for that one. A marble is going to be taken at random from a box of marbles. The probability that the marble will be silver is 0 0.5. There must be an even number of marbles in the box. Explain why. Well, if there was an odd number of marbles, let's say we've got seven of them, five, six, seven, for there to be 50% silver, you would have to have half a marble being silver. So quite literally for this one, you get the mark, you say you cannot have half a marble. It has to be an even number of marbles because you can't have half a marble. If it's going to be exactly 50%, half has to be silver and so we can't have half a marble so it can't be odd. Question number eight. A, B, C, D, E is a pentagon. So we should know angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Angles in a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape, add up to 360. And every time you add a side, you add another 180 degrees. So a pentagon, it's really helpful to know a pentagon's 540. The formula for that is the number of sides take away 2 times by 180. So if it's a five-sided shape, for example, we would do 5 take away 2, which is 3. 3 lots of 180 is 540, but these are just good ones to know anyway. So I know that the angles inside the shape are going to need to add up to 540. It says angle BCD. Now BCD is that angle there. So it's the angle that's made when you go from B to C to D is double angle ABC. And ABC is that angle there. So this one I'm going to call it x, this one I'm going to call it 2x. If this angle is double, this one. Work out the size of angle BCD, so that's the bigger one. You must show all your working. So we know that 90 add 115, add 125, add x, add 2x needs to make 540 degrees. So adding together all those angles, 125 add 115, I'm just going to grab my calculator. 125, add 115, add 90. These angles so far, these three, they add to make 330. So I'm going to say 330, add the three x's, equals 540. Now we want to take 330 away from both sides so that we can solve this. And that is 210. So 3x equals 210. And that's three lots of x. I don't want three lots of x. I just want to know what x is. So I'm going to divide both sides by three. 
I said X and wrote X at the same time. X equals 70 degrees, perfect. There we go, so once you know that X is 70, I can now go back and say, well, this angle over here, that is 70 degrees. And if this angle here is double, it must be 140. And if you added up all of those angles, they would make 540. In this question, they were asking me for this angle, the angle BCD. So on the answer line, I'm gonna pop 140 degrees. Question number 28, make G the subject of the formula. So what we're gonna do here is put a dotted line where the equals is, and whatever we do to one side, we're gonna to do to the other. Now, what this means, at the minute, T is the subject of the formula because the T is on its own, and it equals everything else on the other side. Now, the aim of the game here is to get the G on its own, and we can't just swap them. I marked this paper, and a lot of students did just swap where the T was and the G was, and you can't do that, okay? We need to work backwards here. What is happening to G? Well, G, you're adding six to it, then you're dividing it by two, I and mean, then you're taking that answer and you're doing the square root of it all. So I want to undo all of those steps. The first thing I'm going to do is square both sides. That's going to get rid of that square root on the right. But on the left, I now need t squared to equal g add 6, all divided by 2. Now the next, uh, the last thing that's happening to g now is that it's being divided by 2. So now we're going to times both sides by 2 and that's going to get rid of that denominator. And now I have two lots of t squared equals g add 6. Now the last thing now that's happening to g is that we're adding 6 to it. We always want to do the opposite. So I'm going to take 6 away from both sides. 2t squared minus 6 equals g. And I've now made g the subject of the formula. You could leave it like that. It doesn't need to be swapped round the other way. But I'm just going to swap it round. So it's g equals 2t squared minus six and that is three marks that students really struggled with that i remember marking that question and, and that was a real minority if you got that so really well done if you did manage to get that question let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and i will see you guys next week